Hello and welcome to the video, Back Photography here, back with another video, so welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be about aperture or f-stop, what it means, how it affects photos and how you can use it to add creativity to your photo or just take your photos to the next level. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in this sort of content so you don't miss out on any content like this in the future. So here we are again with Kiara and I'll leave a link to her Instagram in the description if you're interested in checking out more of her work. Also gonna leave in the description a link to some raw files so you can edit some of these photos yourself and also all the equipment that I used in this video as well. Also, if you're down there, make sure to follow my Instagram. A link will be in the description for that as well. So for these photos, we shot with a Sigma 85mm and a Sigma 50mm f1.4. And I'll try to put a few photos together side by side so you can see the differences that a different aperture has on different photos. We'll try to keep the exposure the same and keep the shutter speed and ISO relatively the same as well, just so you can see the differences in aperture and that's it. So all of these photos were taken on a Sigma 85mm 1.4 and 50mm 1.4. So what does f1.4 actually mean? Well, that is talking about the aperture of the lens or the F number. And essentially the lower the aperture, the lower the F number, the wider the opening in the back of the lens is gonna be, which means that more light can hit your sensor um, at the back of your camera. And so why do we want more light to hit the back of our sensor? Well, basically what that means is that we can shoot in lower light situations and we can shoot at higher shutter speeds and still get a nice exposure in the image. So there are a few other things that the aperture affect as well as how much light lets in into your camera. Another thing that happens when you shoot at a really low aperture like 1.4, 1.8 or 2.8, um, you actually also get a much blurrier background compared to the focus of your subject. And basically the reason for that is because when you have a larger opening in the back of your lens, light can actually hit your sensor from a lot more different angles. And that means that there's not going to be a big of a focal point in your image, which means that all the things that are going to be really far away or really far in front of the point of focus that you're shooting on are going to be more blurry as a result. So now let's have a look at a few photos so you can see what I mean by depth of field and blurry backgrounds compared to the subject. Here are two photos taken at f1.4 and f7.1. So f1.4 is a really, really low aperture and not many lenses can actually shoot this low, um, but it means that you're gonna get really, really out of focus backgrounds compared to the sharpness of your subject. So that's the photo on the left. Now the photo on the right was taken with the same lens, but the aperture has been stopped down to f7.1, which means that the background is gonna be a lot more in focus and you're not gonna get the separation that you would see from a, a shot that was taken at a lower aperture like 1.4. It's also worth noting that f7.1 is a really dark aperture compared to 1.4, which means that you're gonna need a lot more light to get the same exposure, which means you're going to either have to bump up your ISO, which increases the sensitivity of your sensor so that when light hits it, you get more of a signal, or you're gonna to have to slow down the shutter speed of your camera so that the opening of the shutter is open for longer, which means that more light, again, is gonna be let into your sensor. So when you're shooting at a really low aperture like f1.4, you have to be really careful with portraits to make sure that you're focusing on your model's eyes because this is the place you wanna be sharp and want to draw focus. And when you're looking at a photo, especially a portrait, the eyes are what really draws your attention and that is what you want to get sharp. And shooting really low at an aperture of f1.4 it's going to be really difficult to get these eyes in focus and you can see actually in this photo I missed the focus just slightly so the eyes are just ever so slightly blurry but I think in this photo we can get away with it but any more blurry than this and the photo would have been a write-off and when I'm shooting at an aperture of 1.4 I'm probably losing about half the photos I take just because I'm not quite hitting the focus perfectly so when you're shooting at a really, really low aperture, you have to make sure that the, your focus point, if you're using something like a Canon DSLR, the focus point is much right up onto the eye of your subject. Or if you're using something like a Sony, you might have facial recognition. You really wanna make sure that your subject isn't moving while you're taking this photo. And you wanna make sure that you really let your camera get the perfect focus if you're using like face detection or eye detection. Or if you're using a Canon camera, make sure that your focal point is right on the eye. One thing that people do when they're just starting is they'll focus on the nose. And when you're shooting at an aperture above about 2.8, this is normally okay, unless you're using like a really long lens, like a 200 mil or something like that. But when you're shooting at a low aperture, you really can't be that sloppy and you have to get it perfect. Otherwise your photo is gonna be out of focus and not usable. 
On the other hand, here with an aperture of 7.1, it really doesn't matter where on the face we're focusing. As you can see, everything here is nice and sharp, nice and clear and crisp. So even if I focused on the nose or on the eyebrow or anything like that, everything is close enough to the focal plane that it'll all be nice and sharp. Now the problem with this with portraits is if everything's sharp, it's more difficult to draw focus to your subject compared to the background. And this is a tip here that I'm about to tell you that I've never really heard anyone say, but I think it's a really fundamental and important trick and it's that you have two ways that you can separate your model from the background. The first way and the most easy way is to shoot at a low aperture but the second way you can do it is actually with lighting and basically illuminating one part of your model's body, let's say like one side of her face, and then using the other side of their body and face and also the background in darkness so that we have some separation between the things that are in focus and bright and things that aren't as important in the frame that are darker and in the background as well. So now that we've talked about aperture, let's talk about lenses and how aperture actually relates to lenses at certain focal lengths and certain lens styles. So most lenses that come with your kit cameras, if you're getting a lower level budget camera, something for a prosumer or someone who's just getting into photography, these lenses aren't often going to be able to shoot at low apertures. So for example, the kit lens, the 18 to 55 lens that comes with the Canon kit that you'd buy with something like an 80D or a 90D, an 800D, something like that, that is only going to be able to shoot at a maximum aperture of f3.5. And that is still quite a high aperture, so you're not going to get really blurry backgrounds and you're not going to be able to shoot really well in low light. One of the reasons is because this lens is quite cheaply made but another reason is because it's a zoom lens and it's much more difficult to make lenses low aperture and also be light and have a zoom range. So most of the lenses that have a super wide aperture are going to be what's known as prime lenses which only have one focal length. So one perfect example of a low budget prime lens that's a really good place to start if you're looking into getting some lenses that are really good at shooting at low light and good at shooting with a shallow depth of field is a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens and I'll leave in the description a link to these lenses for each type of camera. This lens is going to be really good because it's super cheap, it's only about $150 brand new for Canon or Nikon or Sony and also um, it's going to be a really good focal length for anyone who is shooting full frame and still quite a good focal length for anyone who's shooting APS-C. What that means is someone who's using a crop sensor on a consumer level DSLR such as a Canon ATD or a Nikon D5200 or something like that. So when is it good to use a low aperture and when is it good to use a high aperture? Well, it really depends on the situation and what style you're looking to go for in your photography, what type of photography you're doing, and a whole bunch of other factors. And these are really just guidelines. You can use a high aperture for any situation. You can use a low aperture for any situation. It really just depends on the stylistic choice uh, that you're going for in your photography. But as a general rule of thumb, people like to use a low aperture when they're shooting natural light portraits or if they're shooting stuff in low light. And people like to use a high aperture when they're doing things like studio fashion work or they're shooting landscapes or something like that where they want to get everything nice and sharp. But this is just a rule of thumb. As I said, you can shoot landscapes at low aperture. You can shoot natural light portraits at high aperture. It's really up to you and also up to the environment that you're in and your constraints with your equipment and the constraints of the lighting in the area that you're in. So one final thing that I'd like to mention about aperture is that the type of lens that you're using is going to make quite a big difference to the effects that your aperture is going to have. So if you're shooting with a macro lens which is a lens that focuses really really closely to your subject if you're shooting insects or if you're shooting weddings or something like that for the rings uh, shooting at an aperture of f7.1 is actually going to be quite a shallow depth of field whereas if you're using like a wide angle lens something like a 35 mm um, shooting at 7.1 is going to mean that a lot of things are sharp so the longer you go with your lens or the closer the focusing you are with your lens, the shallower a depth of field is going to be at any given aperture. So as a general rule, anything below about 2.8 is gonna be considered a low aperture, and then anything above maybe about 6.3 is gonna be considered a high aperture, but with the exception of macro photography, where even apertures of 11 or even higher can be quite thin, um, and you really do have to stop down to get everything in focus when you're shooting that close to your subject. 
And that's another thing that you need to take into consideration as well. If you're shooting portraits that are just headshots and you're really, really close to your subject, an aperture of f2.8 might be way too wide uh, for you to get everything in focus that you'd like. But if you're shooting uh, way further back and you're doing something like a full body portrait, shooting at f1.4 can give you quite a sharp full body uh, compared to if you're really nice and close. And also if you're shooting at something like 200mm, shooting at f2.8 is going to be even more blurrier in the background than if you were shooting, let's say, a 35mm at 1.4. So not only does the aperture make a difference for the blurriness of the background compared to your subject, but the focal length of your lens is also gonna make a big difference. So I think we'll leave the discussion on aperture there. Let me know if you want me to go even more in depth on a second video explaining uh, from a physics perspective and a maths perspective how aperture is calculated and that kind of thing. Um, this is going to be a part of three parts of a series and that is going to be uh, this one which is aperture and then we're going to do shutter speed and then finally we'll do ISO which completes the exposure triangle and allows you to be able to shoot in manual mode and understand how all the settings work. So if you've made it this far make sure to subscribe to the channel I really appreciate it and also if you do edit the raw files send me a link on Instagram I'd love to check out your work and I'd love to see how you edit these photos as well um, just to get some more inspiration on my editing and just to collab in that way that would be awesome so thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one